there. Today I want to talk about beautiful cut flowers that you can get from your garden. And I want to share many ways that you can use this in a unique way. Um, they don't have to just be cut flowers. You can get really creative and think outside of the box. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today in this video. I'm also going to show you how I create beautiful tablescapes and the ideas that the flowers themselves give me when I set the table. Make sure you stay to the end because I am going to give you lots and lots of ideas. In case we haven't met yet, my name is Cynthia and I like everything Home and Garden. I like to create beautiful things that add on to my experience at home. One of the things that has worked for me like magic is having a set of flowers that are perfect for flower arrangements. I have four bushes of white paniculata hydrangeas that have worked like magic for this because they have a big flower. And so they really take up a whole big space. And I like to get a big container to do my flowers so they really stand out. And then I take the paniculatas, which are often in my arrangements. I mix them up in different ways so that I can make so many different types of arrangements. But what's really cool and I think different about my arrangements is that I like to find flowers and fillers that are not your typical fillers, right? I know that we all like baby's breath and I do too, but this is the time for you to look in your garden and see everything with a different set of eyes. Now these um, fillers that I'm using that are the tall ones are gonna give it the height. And this flower is called Crocosmia. Well, I don't know exactly how it's pronounced. I will put all the details in the description below, but I like it a lot because it gives it height it does act like a filler, it gives it more green, and it is really a nice color. So I like to start with the typical flowers, in this case hydrangeas, and then go for something completely out of the box, something that is unexpected for that wow factor. And in this case, it's the crocosmias with that beautiful orange color and that height and grass-like leaves. I noticed I needed to get more hydrangeas and so I went back out in the garden and I got some more. And then I noticed that I needed to add more height with them so I started cutting the stems a little bit taller so that they would have more height. So a total of 10 hydrangeas were used for this arrangement. And then at that point I decided I really needed to use fillers. I went back out to the garden and I noticed this. This is a bush. Let me show it to you. All right, I'm gonna walk out. Here's my front door. Okay, I've used this as fillers. I've used this as fillers. I've used this as fillers. And this is the one I'm showing you right now. This is the filler of the day. This bush is called Sunshine Ligustrum. I've used this one, which is Golden Showers. I've used this one as fillers. I've used this one as well. It's a chased tree. I've used this as a totally cool different arrangement, which is the bottle brush. I've also used Mexican heather. Basically, I use anything and everything in my garden. I'm not ashamed to put it together. I have used this one, which is so beautiful. Right now it actually has berries on it. Actually, this has been used as a table runner and we've designed around it to create an amazing tablescape for things. Did you notice the little pumpkin had a little leaf set with a name tag? Well, these leaves come from a bush that I have outside that I love called the pineapple guava. And I love it for the leaf structure because it's beautiful, but also the fruit is yummy. And I do have a video of that if you want to watch it. Use your imagination. Look at the little dainty liriope in this small arrangement. So again, I thought the chartreuse green of this Sunshine Ligustrum was pretty right on for me, and I love it. I really do like how it gives it a different vibe. There's no set of rules of how many different types of fillers you have. There's no rules of any kind. You get to put it together. And I think if anything out of this video, I'm inspiring you to do whatever the heck you want. Lately, I've been experimenting by adding two little flower vases right next to my bigger vase that is like a mini version of that one. And I love it because it makes the table look longer. 
One of the reasons that I consider myself really connected with flowers is that I really understand their growth habit both in the garden and also when they are cut and put into a vase. So I wanted to show you Crocosmia because this is the day after. So yesterday they looked super bright, open and so forth. And so that's a cut flower that you can use the day of. So if you have a party and you want to wow everybody, you could use Crocosmia and cut it the day of the party, right? The day after you're going to have pretty interesting uh, flower, but it's going to start wilting a little bit, right? And I wanted to show you that. I wanted to show you that it's important to understand the behavior of flowers once they are cut. Daylilies, for example, because they live one day, as their name implies, that's why they're called daylilies, they're not good for these types of arrangements. And they could be good for that one day. And so are Crocosmia. And I really wanted to show you that because even though it's showy and it still looks beautiful to me, look at this, for example, right here, where there's the little thing coming out. It's still beautiful and interesting to me. And I think it's still worth keeping this way. But if you understand how long they flower and so forth, you are really going to appreciate it. The one that's doing well still is the chartreuse of the sunshine ligustrum. I already know that hydrangeas are like my stellars, right? They are the the best cut flower that I have for my buck. They're big, they are so they last long, they even dry beautiful. So hydrangeas are it for me in my garden. I also have knockout roses. I also have gladiolus, which I use, um, which do well. There are so many really interesting flower arrangements that you can make that are going to be unique to you. And what is going to make it even more special is the fact that you grew the flower, you nurtured it, and now you are showcasing it. How much more special can it get? I made the statement that the flowers often dictate how I am going to decorate the table because they really do inspire me to do that. So I wanted to show you how I would have decorated the table with this arrangement if I had company over. And remember, I probably would have done that yesterday because yesterday was the day that I had cut them and they were in its full glory. So I had this just like this for me. And as you can see, I've been playing around having those little extra ones, but let's, uh, Let's try something else.
so many opportunities for different plants all over your garden that you might have not thought would have made a great arrangement. And don't be afraid to experiment, to try something new. Because remember, I always say, you can create bliss at home and in the garden. See you next time.